Whether you keep them in your home or love to see them in theirs, these are the creatures that bring us all together. Reptiles. Reptiles. We're going to be delving into the experiences of reptile lovers from around the block and around the world. This is the Reptile Talk Podcast. Boom! What's going on, everybody? This is Jeremy Turgeon from Brassman Reptiles. And I'm Rob, and I'm creeping it real. Hey, so we are doing another remote podcast. Uh, so so last podcast with uh, with Jacob, there was a little bit of, of uh, audio nonsense happening. So a couple people messaged me about that. So thank you for bearing with that. There's unfortunately nothing I can do about it because it's just how Wi-Fi glitches. So hopefully we can uh, we can figure that out, especially once Rob is in uh, North Carolina. Uh, maybe we can figure, figure some things out. So uh, so bear with us. Uh, hopefully you enjoy that episode if you've made it through the uh, the audio chaos. Um, it wasn't too bad, but there was a little bit of feedback. So um, I want to just give a shout out to everybody that's left us reviews on Apple Podcasts. There's over 75 reviews on Apple Podcasts. We've got a 4.9 star rating. Um, wow. Appreciate that so, so much. Um, so, yeah. And uh, if you're uh, joining us here on YouTube, Thank you so much for jumping on. Feel free to uh, throw some comments down in the chat. I periodically look through stuff. And uh, if you want to, uh, if you feel so inclined to send us a super chat, um, feel free to do that. We'll uh, highlight that and all that other fun stuff. So um, I'm excited for tonight. I'm excited I'm for tonight too. for two reasons. One, because we tried to do this and it didn't happen already. <laughs> but two, because uh, there's, there's going to be there's going to be some some Italian some Italian nonsense that's that's going to happen. So, I'm excited oh, yeah. for that. Rob Rob's over there. He doesn't know. He just I'm not ready. Know. Yeah. He's not ready. <laughs> He's just not ready. Rob, the, the trick is all you got to do is use your hands. That's when you talk, you just use your hands. The people on the audio only can't see that though. That's okay. They they're, they're going to get the <laughs> Everybody on YouTube gets the hands. Everybody audio only gets the accent. It's going to be okay. So <laughs> it's, all it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. So without further ado, we're talking with John and Dragna from Sim Container. Let's get him in here. Hey. hey. I can't believe you invited me on this show. This is great. <laughs> What's up, dude? How's it going? Fine. How about you? I can't complain, man. Can't complain. Well, oh, wait. Do we, do, are we going to be in character for the whole podcast? We could do it oh. the whole time. The whole time. <laughs> I think, I think honestly, it'll drive Rob nuts. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, man. But I got to say, that, that, that whole banter back and forth at Tinley with the O oh, and the A and the fun Italian hand gesture stuff was hey. made the show great. <laughs> Every it time I awesome. saw you, it was like, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Hey, I, how are you doing? What are you doing hey. over here on this side of the block? You need I'm to over, here over here now. <laughs> go, go over there. Go back to your booth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to go over there. All right, yeah, yeah. So for yeah. those who don't know, especially if you missed the, uh, the Instagrams, this is John, John from from Sim Container, who's got these lizards. He's got so many lizards, he doesn't know what to do with them. But he's really good at breeding these lizards. And when he breeds them, he gets the eggs. He puts them in the Sim Container, and they go in the incubator. Incubator. They go in the incubator. Incubator. The Sim Container and, goes and in an incubator. They get incubated, and then they hatch. <laughs> they hatch. And then and then he gives him the boot and he kicks him out and he says, Hey, you hey, boy, hey. you ready? You ready to eat? You ready to eat? It's time for ready? the cabo. You, you out of there. You eat and you get the hell out. That's it. That's oh, it. You want to buy this shit. So you gotta go see see Johnny down the block over there at Sim Container and they'll hook you up. <laughs> I don't think I'm selling any more sim containers after this shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy well look behind me there's a bell lace right there yeah that's uh, so you have the coolest background 
compared to any. <laughs> yeah, that that's my dream wizard right there. I remember seeing pictures of Bell Voice in a book when I was a kid, and just being like, "That is the coolest lizard on the planet." There's nothing else since then that has ever, for lizards wise, yeah. nothing else has popped that for me. I remember going to my first White Plains show and seeing the um, the EcoWare shirts. They had the big bells lace on it. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I begged my mom to get that one for me. I was like, I need it. I took the lace <laughs> that monitor shirt. on it. I need it. I, I, I'm pretty sure I still have it someplace too, but like that shirt's got to be 15 years old or something. But that, I was just like, I'm still obsessed with lace monitors. I love them. If I get any lizards, it's going to be a lace monitor, a bell lace. It's got to be. You need one lace, and you, you need one bell lace in your life. You do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not too bad. <laughs> True. <laughs> so, John, how many how many different species of monitors do you do you work with? Uh, I have. Uh, I have a lot of dwarf stuff, and uh, I don't have so much big stuff. I have coming eye, new callus, and lace monitors here. Um, and then dwarf stuff, I have Ackies, Primordius, Kimberly Rocks. Um, uh, what else do I have? I don't even know. Top Ender Ackies, Red Ackies. <laughs> I like Kimberly. I, Kimberly's I, my favorite, I, too. I'm hoping to get some pilbaras. I gotta get some. Yeah, pilbaras yeah. are awesome. Yeah, and I'm looking for similis. Can't find them anywhere. Mm. I, I haven't seen similis in a while. And you know what's funny? You never see similis, and when they pop up, they're three hundred dollars. And it's like, what the? Fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Why are they three hundred dollars? I mean, <laughs> the price is amazing. Them. And nobody breeds them. You can't find them. No, anyone who tries is not having success. It's they're really, they're really difficult. But uh, I like a challenge. Hell Heck yeah. yeah! Heck yeah! Yeah. So what? What was your, uh, what was your draw to the dwarf stuff? Was it literally just like, hey man, I don't have a whole, a whole house to get to dedicate to these things, or was it just like, man, I love these little dinosaurs? Yeah, I, I coaxed my. Uh, my in-laws before I got uh, before I married my wife, I moved in with my girl, and uh, I said, "Can I keep my lizards in the basement?" And they're like, "Yeah, just you know, do what you want. <laughs> do what you want." I said, "Okay." I, I drag in, I drag in a six foot three inch, forty five pound sofa female. Oh. I drag in a seven foot male. I drag in a pair of Mertens. I dragged in Tristus, Ackies, Gill and I stores, monitors, Bobaras, Kimberly Rocks. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, John, do whatever the hell you want. Oh my God. That's not like, oh, he's got like a little lizard. You know, he's got like a, he's got a gecko. It's okay. Just bring whatever you want. And then you're like, no. okay. give little Johnny what he wants. You know, yeah. give him, he wants a little space for his tanks. Oh my god, that is great. There's me carrying like, <laughs> monster sulfur into yeah, the house. Walking past, walking past my mother-in-law, like, hi, hey, this is uh this is one of them. One. <laughs> 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 I could literally like just wear them like skates and just walk into the house with these big walls <laughs> under my feet. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's, I, I, that's I got wild. into the I got into the dwarf stuff because I could I could put a, put a whole lot more of them in that room <laughs> than just you know fill it up with three more water monitors you know <laughs> and that's what I did yeah. oh I forgot one uh, the the black headed Tristus I had th those are the first ones I bred so it's mm. Tristus Ackies yellow Ackies red Ackies um, stores pill bars Kimberly rocks I had everything at one time uh, I had all of them. Damn. What do you think about the split on on Ackies? They're saying that reds and yellows are the same thing. Well, genetically, they are the same thing. There's really no difference. I mean, there's a scalation difference externally, and mm -hmm. maybe there's a behavior difference, and maybe a geographic dis difference, but genetically, they're the same thing. I think so. that's super interesting because um, people are like going strictly just based on the genetics right now, and that well, not necessarily but like that's the huge argument is like oh but genetically they're the same thing but if you look at them as, as what they actually look like and how they yeah. act and all these different things they're very different yeah so it's like we have to take into like i think that 
people should also be taking into account all those different things too. Uh, like uh, I always talk, I talk about the fish podcast, the Aquarius podcast. Yeah. Uh, episode like 14, there's a guy who does, he's like an older guy and he's talking about how they identify and separate out the different species of fish. And he's talking about Lake Tanganyika and all these different right. little fish see in there. And he's like, if you follow a male around, he'll only breed with his own species, but we can't tell them apart. All the females look the same to us. And to him, he can tell all the different ones apart. He'll only breed with his own wow. species. It's so wild. Interesting. Right? And then we're sitting here like, oh, we genetically are the same, so they're the same. And it's like, dude, we have, there's more to take into account than just, oh, the genetic test thing said it's the same. Yeah. yeah uh, you know, they, they and there are behavior differences with the reds and the yellows. Nope. The reds are more turn around and bite you type. Evil. Animal. They're evil. They're terrible. <laughs> I, have, they're I, I, don't, I don't have any reds in my house that bite, though. I could pick them all up. That's good. Because all the reds I've ever messed with, they'll just turn right around and <clears throat> they'll just grab you. Yeah, I know. I, I've I've had that before, but it's. I think I just play with them way too much now that they're just used to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I wonder, the generational thing makes a difference too, like with our water monitors. It's enough to get certain generations in yeah. breeding ones that are a little bit better behaved that you're getting towards better ones, better behaved ones. Yeah, I, I I'm, I'm working with coming eye, which are notoriously difficult, cool. but. There are coming eye that are puppy tame. I've I've owned them. I I have them. I've seen them. There's a guy on Instagram. He's a customer of mine. He has a Instagram page called Little Yellow Dragon, and this coming eye he got from me about three years ago is outside on this on in like the parks of uh, in, in L.A. And this lizard is handled by everyone, celebrities, models. Just wow. people walking around. It's the friendliest coming I've ever seen. It's and it's like five feet long. That's awesome. <laughs> and it's beautiful, beautiful lizard. And I'm like, every time I see it, I'm like, oh my god, that's one of my babies. That's <laughs> I love that. Oh, that's I love so that. Sweet. You know, somebody actually took the time to uh, you know put some time in with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, play that's with it, get to know it, <laughs> take it outside. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's one of the greatest feelings, man. When when you when you see that, you know, somebody that's like, yeah, it's, you know, I killed this guy a lizard, but yeah. you know, when you see that they're really into it, you know, yeah. they put that time, that that dedication into it, and you see the 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 success, you know, yeah. like that's that's one of the best feelings ever. I had somebody come up to me at Tinley. It was a woman. She was with her son. Uh, and she came up to me. She said, in 2017, I bought an Aki from you in Daytona. And here he is. And he's still doing great. And he lives in my living room. And I made a playpen for him in the, in the, other, in the other room. And I was like, whatever you're doing, you're doing great. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I, I, I love the updates. I, get, I got a couple of guys that update me all the time. They're like, yeah, they buy one Aki. Some, most of these people buy one Aki. And they disappear and never see the animal again. I don't hear from them again. But some people come back, and I love it when they come back and they give me updates, and they tell me when I got it, and you know how how it's done for them, and th that stuff is great. The feedback is amazing. Yeah, it means a lot. Yeah, as a breeder, as someone who's producing stuff, it is so satisfying when someone comes back a year or two or three years later, and they're like, "Look at this thing that I got from you, and look at how awesome it's doing." And like, oh my, it's it's so trippy to see like an animal that you hatched out, and then you like you know place into this person's hands. And then, you know, just see how well they do with it and, like, how much they appreciate that animal. It's so satisfying. I agree. It's uh, amazing. It's an amazing feeling. It is one of your babies, you know? You want to see everyone take care of them the same way, but it doesn't always happen. And, you know, some, some things happen that are not so good, but the majority are great. And the yeah. feedback I've been getting is great, so. That's awesome. <laughs> So I gotta, I gotta know what got you into the lace monitors. How did you initially get started with the laces, and then uh, after that, Nutella. Okay, so the uh, the lace monitors I was offered um, to import from Europe um, in 2012, and I imported them and I sold them to Don Church, and then I brought in more and I sold them to other people, and then my partner Alex and I said, "What the hell are we doing?" Yeah. <laughs> selling all of these high-end, gorgeous, fuck, ooh, 
those leads to the, ah, to it's, all, every, it's all good. It's all good. You say what oh, you want. Good. Fucking good. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> okay, okay, because I got potty mouth. You know, I'm a truck driver. You know, <laughs> truck driver, sim container guy. <laughs> so, uh, what was they saying? I don't even remember. Yeah. Wait, so you, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I was saying, uh, why are we giving away these lace monitors to these other guys to breed? And I'm like, they should be here with me or with my my partner. So we just made a conscious effort to get more for ourselves and eventually started making our own but uh, i think that uh for the first five years we were like watching people have uh, amazing success with them we we're like shit i'm happy for them but at the same time i want them <laughs> for real no and and then the new callus the new callus the first time i saw new callus in this country was in the early 2000s it was in uh it was in long island it was at a pet mm -hmm. shop and i was like wow what a strange looking water monitor you know you got the big neck scales and mm -hmm. the head was turning white and it's just yep. different the tail crest is like really low like a mangrove monitor like they don't mm -hmm. have that big flat tail like like the yeah. big asians so they got a low tail and it's really long they got these big neck scales and a longer face and i was like this is freaking cool. And they don't get big, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So then I saw on on um, King Snake in the classified, somebody had um, imported legally Marmoratus coming eye in New Calis. And I wound up buying all of them. Mm. And then that's was the start of my my breeding stock for the New Calis. That's awesome. And uh, it took a long time. It took a long time to get them going. Um, and then we wound up getting the whitehead types and the blackhead types. Mm -hmm. And um, got a few clutches cooked and uh, hatched. And um, I like them. I still have, uh, I still have a couple of pairs here. <laughs> They're so cool, man. That's such a unique monitor. Like they, going from yeah. working with the monitors to then seeing those, you, like most people might not appreciate it, but if you've been around right. lizards and monsters and stuff, they're so interesting. Yeah, you know the Philippine stuff, and then just south of them is Sulawesi. So the mm -hmm. Philippines, you got all this variety. You got eight different species, of, or seven different species of water monitors just in the Philippines. Then Sulawesi, you have you have two, probably more, but right now two, uh, yeah, two species on Sulawesi, and then straight down, you have. Sambawa, Flores, and all the little islands heading out east. And all of those water monitors on those islands are different looking. Mm -hmm. But it's only in that, if you circle that whole area, the Philippines, Sulawesi, and then Sambawa, where Sambawa starts, all, it's like a north to south thing. It, all those water monitors in that area are just crazy looking. Compared to the rest of, of the water monitor populations, which are either, you know, brown or dark with rings and kind of classic looking water monitors you know the oh, rings cool. on the back and you know yeah. but everything everything after 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 lombok man gets crazy <laughs> heading oh. like, as you head east the water monitors get crazy looking mm. so when are you going over there to, to see them in the wild that's what i want to know i was there uh, while well, i was in thailand like uh, 10 years ago that was fun i saw about 60 water monitors in one weekend i, th I was like you know what i think i saw enough water monitors for, for <laughs> <laughs> I, if you're out there seeing the sambawas and some of the other stuff it might be different <laughs> that i would like to see i, I know where the sulfurs are from i want to go to central java and see them i also want to go to sambawa and see that the problem with sambawa is it's so damn remote like I would have to hire people to come with me and translate because I don't speak any any Indonesian at all. Yeah. You know, I don't I don't really know where I'm going. I can figure out how to get there, but Could I would you be imagine once you're there. Hey, 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 hey the lizards. I'm hey, here for I'm here for the yellow lizards. I can't find good mozzarella here. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the good Italian bread? <laughs> oh my god. You guys got Where's the pizza? <laughs> <laughs> These people don't like pizza. <laughs> Dude, I I do love the look of the Java water monitors, though. If I ever, if when I go over to Southeast Asia, like if I can hit up Java to see some of the stuff that they got out there, 
Yeah. I just love the look of their water monitors out there. And then they also have a lot of other cool species there. But Borneo and Sumatra are like top of my priority list. Those job and water monitors. There's just so much variety. Mm -hmm. So much. You got you got you have jet black ones like the black dragon around the coast, around the west side. And then in the east they get like guru looking, you know, like black with the big the big white rings. Yeah. And then and then that Medora Island. I the pictures of the Medora in the wild don't look like what people are calling Medora in the pet tree. So I'm a, mm -hmm. I'm like, is that really Medora? I don't know. You know, yeah. they don't look exactly like a Medora in the wild. Honestly, it probably has to do with the import thing, like with green tree pythons and stuff, where they use a, a port and they just kind of label it after that yeah. port. And it's like the people might have collected it someplace else and then brought it over there. So. Right. Right. I, I like when people ask me, hey, what's the locality of my blue tail monitor? I'm like, what? <laughs> Do you know that side of, of, of West, West, what is it, West Papua? It's just all trees and mountains. You want to know exactly where this thing came like, from? Like, yeah. It's like, yeah, Jimmy from Vermont. He looks like this. And then over here, you, got, <laughs> you, can't, you, can't, you can't be accurate with that. How are we going to know? I don't know. I don't, for, I don't I have no idea. <laughs> Unless you blue there, tails, like yourself. blue tails. I have no idea. There's so many different varieties, and I don't know if it's the same species. It's probably a giant complex of different species. Some have blue tails, some don't. Some have skinny noses, and some have the bigger noses. Yeah, it could be a, a whole species complex. You know, like those Cyclops Mountain blue tails that came in. They didn't have blue tails. They like they come in as orange spot Dorianas. Mm -hmm. You know, and then um, up by, um, um, is it by Viac? Yeah, I think it is. You get these ones that look like Indicus and Dorianus crossbred. So I was calling them Dorindicus like 12 years ago. I, like, <laughs> I don't know. It's like a mix of the two. Yeah. But they don't have a blue tail. They, they're kind of uh, like an olive green with yellow rings and stuff, yellow spots. Yeah. Pretty cool. So that, yeah. that whole species complex is, you know. That needs a, a lot of deciphering. Right now, I'm, I'm not able to uh, take on a project like that. It's just, it's just too confusing. <laughs> For real. For yeah. real. Mm. So what, um, what was the idea that kind of sparked some containers? Oh, my friend Greg Madden came over. He came over. And he, he, I, I should get Greg on one of these chats because he's an interesting character. And he's very... Italian sounding Jeremy, you would like him. He's one of uh, you know, he's like one of yous. One of yous. One of yous guys. guys. One of yous guys. guys. Only he's Irish with blue eyes. <laughs> 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 well, he came over and he wanted to make it was Christmas night, 2008. He wanted to make a no substrate egg container like uh, like the ball pythons guys were doing with the diffuser grid. Yeah. Uh, but he wanted to make it out of a 10 gallon screen cover and he was hammering it to make divots to put the eggs on the on the screen oh, and he said well. instead of doing that let me make you something different so i, I made a, an accordion shape out of plastic coated chicken wire and mm -hmm. then i put the eggs in the valleys of the accordion and we dropped that on top of wet perlite and we you know i gave him the container and he went home and he put leopard gecko eggs in it and they all hatched and i was like that's really cool i'm gonna try it with with Tristus monitors and Ackies, and they all hatched like months later. They all mm. hatched. I said, this thing really works. And then from there, I said, he goes, yeah, we should, we should make these and uh, we should sell them at the shows. I was like, I have to, we have to open up molds. So we did it the right way. We drew up the whole schematic. Uh, I did it on, on an art program. Um, I did it in Illustrator, I think. And then uh, I, I took it. I took the specs to China. So I was at the time going to China a lot, like four or five times a year, um, because I'm in the shoe industry. I'm not a truck driver. See, I, tr I just tricked you guys. <laughs> I'm a shoe. I'm a shoe designer. So I'd be spending a lot of time in, in in China at these mold shops and these factories that are making footwear samples. So yeah. I asked the mold maker, "Hey, can you make this?" And I showed him the drawing. He's like, "Yeah, I can make that." You know, and he gave me a figure and. Um, and then I, I started to make samples of it and then, um, you know, we, we went back and forth on how big it should be. And, uh, and then we produced the first small SIM, it was 2009. And then I got the patent for it 
at the same time. So the patent was approved. It's a utility patent. I got it for 20 years. I paid them. I paid the uh, the uh, the maintenance fees on it. I, I haven't let that slide. Um, if anybody tries to copy me, I try to sue their asses. <laughs> but you know, a lot of these guys are slick. You know, they they get away with like really different chain. Like they can't use the rail system because the rails mm -hmm. are my. That's a real. That's the patent is really. You know the rails and the grid system, how it all fits together, and it's yeah. a one piece unit. You know, it's not just like, uh, you know, it's not just like a, a set in tray, it's like a whole thing. You got the lid, the base. So, anyways, I got the thing patented, and here we are. I've been making them ever since. That's awesome. That's so cool. Thank you. I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm done now. He's like, we talked about the monitors, we talked about some containers, but that's it. <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> but he's done. He's done. It, it works good. This, actually, right here is my incubator. Let me see if I find something for you to see. Um, that's the egg beta? That's the egg beta. <laughs> oh, you got one of them egg beta. Egg beta. It's an egg beta. Them container goes in the egg beta. If you only got one, it doesn't work. You that's need right. both. You need both. You need a. <laughs> <laughs> so here we have uh, there's four bell lace eggs in here and how I set it up this is how I set up all my monitors the same way so it's about an inch to a half inch of water jelly so I just mm -hmm. add water you know like for a sim XL like this it's two cups of water and then like a tablespoon of crystals the water crystals so if you have to move the container you won't make waves and wet your eggs because then you can what Kiss your eggs goodbye. It ain't gonna hatch if they're all wet and crappy. Mm -hmm. So that's how I do it. I do it like this, awesome. and I put them. I have no condensation built on anything. That's another thing I got to talk to you guys about. I get a lot of feedback. Oh, my container gets it like a thunderstorm inside of it. Well, then you probably have your incubator in a cold room, and the temperature is high in the incubator. And then every time you open the door, you're letting all the cold air in, and it changes the temperature of the the container. So you wind up with condensation buildup. So I tell people, put the incubator in a warm room, get it off the floor, lift it up. Um, I tell people don't use Hovabator because it's, it's not, doesn't have a good proportion. Like the, the thermostat is not so good. You know, you want a good yeah. proportional thermostat. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the advice I give people. Uh, this right next to me is a soda refrigerator with clear door. And I used a uh, heat cable up and mm -hmm. down the walls and across the bottom. Yep. A VE200 uh, thermostat from Reptile Basics set to 86. Mm -hmm. Everything's hatching. Everything's hatching. That's and this room, this room is hot. I'm sweating. So <laughs> this room is hot. This, this room is like 80, uh, it's probably about 85 in here. And the incubator is 86. So it's like, why do I even have an incubator? <laughs> well, yeah. part, part of the year, it's not this warm in this room. Right? It's in mm -hmm. the 70s in a couple of months in this room. It drops a lot, and the animals definitely can sense that. Yeah. I'll just put these eggs back before I drop them, and then I don't have those lace eggs to hatch. Yeah, for real. Um, do, you, do you use a circulatory fan in there? No. Oh. I don't have a fan in this one. I don't have a fan. Um, fans are okay, but I don't have one in here. It works fine. Yeah. works fine without. If it ain't broke, yeah. don't fix it. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. I just want to Eric's reptiles for the super sticker. We appreciate that, dude. Oh, thank you, Derek. <laughs> I did yeah. a chat with him uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, Ooh. Derek tries to snipe our guests. Like he just <laughs> he's uh, he had um uh, who did he just he just talked with uh Scott Borden. Yeah. I and uh he was mad that uh, that I got Phil Goss before him, so then he had to get Phil Goss. I'm mad that he had Barcheck before us when I've been talking to Barcheck for months. And we've he known Barcheck for 15 years. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, and he had but, and he had me before you. Yeah, yeah. He had Bob Clark on. He just had Bob wow. Clark on. Tom Crutchfield. I'm like, <laughs> all right, Eric, that's fine. You, you. Listen, you keep doing what you're gonna do. That's fine. But all I'm saying is, when 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 push comes to shove, buddy, you need to know where you need to be. 
<laughs> That's the Jersey guy. What are you doing? Listen, listen, all I'm saying, Derek, listen. You don't have a swim container or an incubator. So you, your shit's not looking good, buddy. Uh, I, I, I sent him a swim container. He loved it. Oh, but then you need an incubator. <laughs> you know what he, he needs an egg beta. You need an egg beta. <laughs> I love that egg beta. If I come out with a sim container, I'm gonna call a, a sim container incubator. I'm gonna call it an egg beta. Egg beta. Egg beta. <laughs> the Jeremy egg beta. Brass man. Edition. Yeah, that's right. Brass man special. Brass man special. Egg beta. <laughs> oh man. Jeremy, you ever hear how, how I met Rob? I met him at a reptile show, and he gave me a cupcake. Yep. I can't tell you how many, how many times I have heard that same story. Like, <laughs> came over and was like, you want a cupcake? And, like, that's what started it all. Uh, and then people were like, the cupcake guy. You're the cupcake guy. Uh, yeah. You know what? I rarely get food from my customers, so it was very interesting, and I never forgot him for that. And he knows he knows the way to my heart, you know. Cupcakes, food, you know. I, I should be eight hundred pounds the way I eat, but <laughs> bacon covered cupcakes. I was like, yes, please, thank you. I'll have two. Yeah, I'll take two. <laughs> the thing is, it just hits the right spot because I usually bring them in at like twelve or noon. Like you're right as you're starting to get hungry for the day for the expo, sitting behind the table and talking to people. So oh, right yes. then, you're like in desperation. You're like, I just need something in my system right now and then a little bit of candied bacon on top of a cupcake just scratches that itch that was so good rob you you must have came in right when when john was like oi my my, my sugar my <laughs> sugar <laughs> getting low my sugar getting low I'm getting a little faint yeah <laughs> feel a little faint behind the table room, room spinning all <laughs> these spin. all the, all so the you get me the orange juice around. the you oh are running around killing me Give me the orange juice. You're killing me. Guy. You're killing me. Where's the Tropicana? <laughs> Give me the Tropicana. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. John, wow. we got to set up at an expo next to each other. Yes, One please. <laughs> That's all uh, I'm saying. Are you guys going to St. Louis? No. No. I I will be I will be at the Arlington show though. That just got what confirmed. you want to the Arlington show? Yeah, that just been. got confirmed. What, what is, is Arlington? That? Uh it's the middle of February, I think. Oh I course. might have to make that work. That, that could be my that's my birthday show. That'll be fun. Hey. hey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's him containing the naked bait is left and right down in Houston. I'm gonna wear the party hat. Hey. <laughs> oh, hey, it's my birthday. Come do some shots and buy an egg container. <laughs> that looks good, guy. Well, I, if Arlington actually sounds really good, I've been looking at that show and Conroe as well. I'd like to go down to those shows and bend them or at least go and hang out. Um, sometimes I don't like bending. You ever just go it's to a show and hang out? Show. Way better. It's way, way better. better. Way better. Yeah. Because I didn't get to hang out with Mike, Mike from Mike's Monitors this trip. I didn't get to go hang mm -hmm. out with, with the other people that I know. And I know a lot of people at these shows. Not that I know everybody, but I know I didn't get to see anyone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's such you know, a pain. Because, like, it's it's like the only high, time high and buy at the, at the auction and then it's over. So mm -hmm. I rather just, sometimes I'd rather just go and not vent. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. just hang out. I got a message about uh, about jumping in on a room with somebody, and you know, I was like, the price was good. I was like, that works because then I can afford the flight. So yeah, I'll, I'll go down. There you go. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. So, I, uh, I, from going through vending and then not vending at shows, yeah. it's so much better not to vend. You get to yeah. just hang out and talk to people. There's no pressure. You don't have to worry about your numbers for the weekend. It's yeah, literally exactly. you know, talk to some reptile people. You want to spend a half hour talking to this person? Talk to that person for a half hour. You don't want to talk to them? Go the other way. That's what I'm fucking doing. So yeah, I, that's it. I have a lot of fun at Daytona, man, because the Daytona oh is hanging out. It's hanging out. That Daytona show 
this year was amazing. Yeah, yeah, it was really good. Really so good. good. I had a good time. A lot of fun. A lot of people showed up. Uh, a lot of friends showed up, and uh, we did really well. And uh, that that was a good one. And I like that show because it's on the beach. So I can escape. Yeah. Get my feet in the water, Jeremy. You know. <laughs> Gotta get your feet in the water. Dude, I, I I like Rob. Rob Rob goes to try to get eaten by sharks. Yeah, I I don't go that far, and I'm not that, <laughs> not that brave. I go in up to my knees. I'm like, oh, I'm all right. I'll just I'm splash some water on me. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I was standing with my back to the beach, and Chris Murray snuck up behind me and just like DDT'd me right into the freaking ocean. <laughs> <laughs> oh just, my god. <laughs> Well, I don't know if it was DDT, but I just felt my head go up and then smashed into the ocean. <laughs> my sunglasses disappeared. I was like, you mother. Oh, no, no. Oh, lost the sunglasses. Oh, damn. Water That's in tough. my nose. Thanks a lot, Chris Murray. <laughs> CM Exotics. Check him out. There's a plug for Chris Murray. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, a lot of fun. I mean, you need eyes on the back end at these reptile shows. You never know who's going to come up behind you. That's true. true. With friends like that, right? Shit. That's it. <laughs> oh. Who would do that to little Johnny? You know, who would do that? Yeah. <laughs> Chris Murray. Of course. Uh, <laughs> another, another little jerk. <laughs> yeah, little monitor syndrome. <laughs> little monitor syndrome. <laughs> You got red action syndrome. Like, I need to somebody right now. Oh. He has an amazing collection, that kid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There uh, is a piece of monitor that uh, that you're, like, itching to work with in the near future. Oh, man. Can you find me some parentes? <laughs> Um, I mean, you can go to Ty Park's place and pet his. I, I know. I know. I, I'd have to wait for Ty to hatch him, and then maybe... Yeah, to get them that so, way. No have you, been, you, haven't, you haven't been to Iguana Land yet, have you? No. So what we need to do is we need to plan a trip for all of I, us to go there. All right. To his place. We'll take a yellow bus. Yes! The short one. The short the bus. I get, I get nervous when I have to walk all the way to the back. I have people throwing shit at me. I don't, I don't like it. I, I want to walk right to my seat. <laughs> but that's the crazy guy. Get in the back. <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. we could get on the little bus with our seatbelts. We all go down and take a twenty-hour ride to Florida <laughs> with the windows down. You know, the ones that you have to drop like this. You know, push, you know, push the things in and then drop it. You know, you see, <laughs> we'll have North our heads Carolina. out the window the, with the fresh air hitting us in the face. The guys, out. guys, we just passed South Carolina. <laughs> And we're halfway there. Yeah, Guys, look, Georgia really does have peaches. Look at all the peaches. <laughs> you just see a bunch of women twerking on the side of the highway. You're like, oh my god. <laughs> oh, this is this is getting good. So you have a pole in the middle of the of the, the, the little <laughs> bus. You know, I I know some reptile keepers uh, of the female <laughs> persuasion that would go down these poles. Oh, they're down. <laughs> they're down. Hundred percent. That could be fun. And then we're gonna play the grizzlies when we get there. You just can't, you can't have them stripping on the way back because they're gonna be covered in monitor just scratches all over. The place. That's true. <laughs> yeah, nobody likes that. You know, scratches all over. <laughs> Take a seat, huh? Take a seat, honey. <laughs> it's in the back of the bus. Back of the, back of the bus, there, honey. <laughs> Here's some bactine for that scratch. That scratch and dead back. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Oh no! But I'll dude, that was so I'll, cool. I'll go down upside down and spin around. <laughs> <laughs> I had Rob. Don't look at me funny. I had a swing set <laughs> when I was a oh, kid. Okay, okay, okay. We'll say, we'll say, we'll say it was that. <laughs> but dude, that was so cool to get a group of us together because Josh is in South Carolina. Yeah, Jeremy's in North Carolina. I'm gonna be in North Carolina at the end of the month, and wow. so. We're, dude, we're just trucking right along. I wonder how many hours it is from where we're going to be at, Jeremy. Uh, it's about eight hours from North Carolina, I think. That's not bad. I'm just saying, that's not that bad. 
Ty said we got an open invite, so we should do it. I'm just saying, I, I'm not crazy about perennies, but I want to see you guys freak out about perennies. Yeah, that I I can't wait. That, that's gonna be fun. Let's let's legit let's plan for that. Let's do it. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, I'm gonna fly in because <laughs> I'm further north than you. Dude, you can fly to North Carolina, stay, and then we're bunching from there. Place, and we just get a rental and go. All right. You know who that's would be fun. cool to have there too? Savannah. Savannah goes there a bunch, so. That'd It'd be, be cool. cool. Oh, yeah, I, I saw her in Daytona too. She's the yeah. bomb. They're amazing. So She's amazing. Um, she bought one of those coming eyes off of me a few years ago. Yeah, yeah, she's a good girl. Hell yeah! It'd be nice to see them. Absolutely. I'll be like, get away, get away. Give me that <laughs> <don't care." laughs> All the, all the hot girls are down there taking self. Get out of my way. Get out of the way. There's a privacy here. Don't you understand what's important way. right now? <laughs> I came all the way from New York. Get out of my way. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see the Parenti. Is, is there anything besides Parenti's that you want to work with? Uh, look, I, I, I don't expect to ever have them in my lifetime. So, but if I did, I would, I would have a, honestly, I'd have a really hard time housing them. I don't have that kind of floor space. You know, yeah. that's a very active lizard. Um, but I kind of like what I have, you know, I like the small stuff. I don't have any tree monitors right now. I patched some greens in the past. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have any trees. I like the tree stuff. Um, I love my lace. I mean, lace are fun. They're not messy lizards at all. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, well, I like all this, I like all my smaller stuff, all my ackies and things. I like I don't know. I have a lot of ackies. A lot. I, I I hoard them. I don't I don't like selling them. I just keep line breeding them and making them prettier and Hell yeah. So if I'm you see me a show selling ackies, you should buy them because that's not a common occurrence, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather just take them home and play with them. You had quite a few with you at Tinley, man. Yeah, I had a bunch. I had a bunch at that show. Yeah, uh, and I, I did sell uh, quite a few. So I was like, yeah. "Well, thank God, I'm coming home. I'm coming home with like eight of them, and I get to keep them." <laughs> Not enough of them. Literally, they're so they're such a hot item, like a hot animal right now. That yeah. you know, when they are available, they're gone. Like people want yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Those are hot right now. I um, I have some tokies. People like toki geckos. I have, uh, like those I have yellow spots and greens and things like that. People like them. I really want to see more candy buttons because the, the candy buttons used to be around. And then I saw them pop up like eight years ago or so. And one or two popped up and they sold immediately. And I haven't seen them. Since. And they're, candy they're, they're yeah. like, I yeah. love those. They're like translucent almost. Yeah, yeah. Really nice. Mm -hmm. I like those. I have a pied. I have a male Ooh. pied, black and white, mean as shit. He's a friggin' bear trap. I hate touching him. <laughs> <laughs> he's good looking. He's he's fun to watch, but he just barks and bites and holds on like a like a like it's a like a bear trap. It's like a mini bear trap. Yeah, <laughs> the I call him a little fire. I have little babies, granites and and olives, and they don't bite. They're fine. But the, this yeah. this pied man, oof. Yeah. I, I have that that lace monitor back there. If she bit me, I'd be in the hospital. Yeah, I don't wear gloves for her. I wear gloves for the friggin' pied toke because <laughs> he always he gets you on the cuticle, and you know that shit oh, yeah. gets wide open. <laughs> oh, okay, the tender spot. One of my favorite comments from Tinley when you're talking about that, and you're like, "You bite, you're right on the cuticle." Like, I got an office job. I can't be bleeding. <laughs> I'm like talking and blood squirting out. I'm like, I got. I'm trying to make a presentation here, and I'm bleeding all over the place. Oh, the, this! I just cut my finger. You know. Yeah. This guy. What am I gonna tell guy. the people? Oh, I have a lizard. It bit me. Oh, that's really <laughs> responsible of you, John. You know. John, you know you have a corporate job. You should be more careful. You gotta be presentable. You gotta be presentable. Okay. You must button up that tie and get to work, John. <laughs> so yeah, they got me on the finger. Meanwhile, that same job, 
um, at, the, at the design studio. I remember one day I got bit by a six foot carpet python and she literally like broke all her teeth in my finger. Oh, oh. And I'm, I'm squeezing teeth and pulling them out. No. Squeezing my finger and the teeth are coming up. Oh, dude. I said, this is terrible. There's blood all yeah. over the place. Yeah. Nothing. But those toe case hurt worse. Oh, oh, hell yeah. Yeah, they I, hurt worse. Any of yeah. the people who work here, I tell them I'll take a bite from a snake up to six feet before I'll take a bite from a toe case. Yeah, they hurt too much. I'm a big wimp. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's real. Freaking real, man. They hurt. <laughs> bites, bites in general just suck. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing about bites of the fingers. <laughs> so there I am with like catches mitts on and a full face mask. Trying to <laughs> Can't put no, my arms no, no, no. down. I'm trying to catch the token. The, the COVID shield face mask. Yeah. Just, just jumping. <laughs> they find a way. They get through the glove. They find a way. <laughs> oh, man. Good times. Good times. <laughs> okay, guy goes. What's been one of the uh, the more challenging species for you to kind of crack the code on for, for, pre for both husbandry and breeding? Uh... Uh, I don't know. I kind of treat all the monitors the same way. I'm only I only really breed monitors. If, I, if I'm not breeding monitors, I'm breeding hognose snakes. I have some of those. Yeah. Um, yeah, you like those? <laughs> hey, <laughs> like that? Hey, hey, you like that? I, I got that. I don't keep them. I don't keep them, but the people love hognose snakes. They do. That's one little messy snake, but I do like them. I've had them for a while. You want them? You can have them. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I love them for you. I love them for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I, I kind of treat the monitors the same way, and they do the same thing. So I don't have much difficulty with them. Um, I, I know I realize that they need it hot, and they need it. They need water. They need heat. And they need a lot of food, and they need really good nesting. Mm -hmm. They do everything else. Um, so they're really not that difficult. I mean, the ones, I, I, I don't really have that much else. I have the hognose snakes and the, and the monitors. I don't have a whole collection of crazy stuff, you know. Right. Um, I, have, I have like five toe cake geckos and uh, <laughs> I haven't bred them yet. Um, so I don't, I, don't, I don't have any answer to that question. I, I don't have a lot of experience with other stuff. Yeah. I just, I just think some, that was kind of trickier than any of the others. Um, well, I'll tell you what. What's uh, for the uh, for the dwarf monitors? What worked best for me? Mm -hmm. You have to have a very tightly compressed nesting substrate. If it's too loose, they get frustrated. They don't lay, and they wind up getting egg bound or other problems. They dump them, dump them in the mm -hmm. water bowl, and that's not good. If they're right. nesting them on the surface behind the log over there, that's not good nesting. So to get them to nest right, you got to give them a really firm, humid substrate. It could be dirt. It could be cocoa peat. It's got to be something big and compressed. It's got to be tight mm -hmm. and warm. And that's been something I figured out that was very important. That's really And echoes for all the monitors, too. The same thing with the coming eye and the lace. If it's too loose, if it doesn't hold the burrow, they're gonna get, they're gonna get, give you a lot of problems. So mm. stick stick to uh, you know, uh, you have to check your nests. So you're gonna check them often because that stuff can dry out. They can kick too much of the substrate out. So I'm always on top of the nests, and that's probably why I have a lot of good nestings and a lot of babies. Cool. It helps okay. prolong those females' lives. You know, if they can lay all the eggs and be happy and come out and start eating right away you know you did a good job you did a good i wonder job. if that's one of the things that was uh preventing me from getting good eggs out of those croc monitors maybe i mean some people just put like sphagnum moss in a box and i'm like well they would never want to put their eggs there in the wild you know no. they're probably laying their eggs in the in the hollow logs towards the ground in the rot of the tree you know the rot at yeah. the rotting frass basically yeah, yeah. Where it compresses at the bottom, so they're probably under the roots, under the roots in in like the rotted part, 
or they're actually in a tree hollow in the rotted parts of the uh the inside of the log yeah i got a female to lay eggs twice but um she held on to them too long and and i mean she nested in and laid like a clutch of eggs but they're all she held on to them too long so they weren't good by the time she laid them i'm wondering if i had the substrate substrate too loose because i had two different nesting areas i had an area that was vertical so it'd be like going into a, a log and then i had a horizontal one and she picked the vertical one the first time and the horizontal one the second time and huh. it's like I couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong. I got her lay eggs, but it was not in the right time frame to get them to be good. So it was like, you know, something was missing. So I wonder if that that's one of the things that I did wrong. I would love to keep that species, but I'm in uh, New York. I can't have them. I would love to have them. I would treat them like the lace monitors. I think they would. Well, I think they would like these cages, and they do okay. I got yeah. a big male super bell walking around behind me, actually to the side oh, of me. That's awesome. <laughs> One day, we'll do, one day we'll do a tour of this room and we'll we'll show you some stuff. Hell yeah! So what size of the cage behind you? Oh, this is um, six feet long, seven feet tall, and four feet front to back with uh, big glass doors that are like floor to ceiling. And mm -hmm. I have uh, two nest boxes in there. One is heated. One is heated and it's cocoa peat compressed, mm -hmm. and the other one is dirt. And uh, I think she's going to nest in the dirt. And she's hanging a lot lately. She's up behind me. You can't really see her. But um, I'm pretty sure they made it in the beginning of October. So um, just in about another week away, we'll get eggs. Hopefully. That's awesome. Hopefully. The other pair I have down here. <coughs> excuse me. Um, she is probably also gravid, but another week out past this one. So. She started a little bit later. Um, and she's the one who I just showed you eggs from. That's awesome. There's actually, there's four in that container and I have another uh, container with some eggs too. Um, and what then I missed the clutch. Huh? What was the clutch size like on, on, on lace monitor? They have bigger clutches or smaller clutches? Um, you could get up to 12 eggs. I know that. Maybe even more, but I'll take 12 eggs. Well, it was funny. I'll take, yeah. I'll take, I'll take one that hatches. Uh, I'll be happy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, yeah. but I expect I them all to hatch. It shouldn't be a problem. Um, yeah. I like them. They're not as messy as other monitors for their size. You know, you know, like <laughs> you, you get a black throat monitor. It's a big lizard. They're not that messy either. You know, yep. but they smell like maple syrup. So they're going to stink up your house. Like, like maple syrup smell. The lace don't really smell so bad, and and they're way cleaner than water monitors. You know, the waters are uh, disrespectful. You're on top of the waters. You got to be on top of them every day. Yeah. The lace you get away. The lace have a big tub to drink and and swim in, but they just drink and they step in it and walk over it. They don't go to the bathroom in it or anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. And water monitor cage survive. Let me poop in it. Yeah, they, they, as soon as you change it, they go right in and shit. And it's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the most obnoxious thing ever. <laughs> it's like they're waiting with their arms on the edge of it, like come on, <laughs> change come this, on, change it, change, change it. this shit for me to poop. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta take a shit. <laughs> change it. Give me clean water to poop in. What the hell's the matter with you? Yeah, and this is yesterday's poop. I need to do today's poop. Today's poop. You'd think that they would drink in it before they poop, but they usually like poop first and then drink it out of it afterwards. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, what are you before doing? It soups, before it soups up, they're like, all right, I poop. Uh, I got 30 seconds. I got 30 what? seconds to get clean water, and then it's done. When people when people tell me they bake their leaves before they put them in the and they bake their branches, I'm like, do you know that these water monitors? They live in garbage dumps and they live a very Literally. long life eating junk and shit, <laughs> and drinking drinking toxic sludge, and you know that leaves from New York. <laughs> Get real. Literally though, literally. Like I'm you like, go to you go Thailand, go. they're eating out of trash, and like they're like pandas, or, uh, not like pandas, they're, they're like raccoons. They're yeah. digging through people's yeah. trash, eating junk and shit. Yeah. They're eating dead stuff that's putrid with flies and maggots, and they're yep. fine. Yep. yep. 
you know, <laughs> like I, I show people like I find these this driftwood on the beach where I live, you know, I'm in uh, Staten Island and I got these this beach, the, the Hudson River comes down and goes under the narrows and all this driftwood comes down the river and then washes up on the beach. So I take it home and I show people like, yeah, I just found this on the beach. It's, you should have seen me trying to stick this in a Volkswagen Passat, but I got it done. <laughs> And I take it home. And they're like, "Well, how do you how do you put that in the oven?" I'm like, "Are you freaking crazy?" What? Put it in the oven? I, I I hose it off, okay, just to get the sand off, so I don't trail sand in the house so my wife don't kill me. And then I put it in the cage. And it lizard climbs on it, takes a shit on it, and it's good. That's how I know. It's a, good, a good branch. It's got poop on it. <laughs> oh my god! That's, that's a true story. Good. Those branches and stuff. That's all from the beach. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I did that before for like Amazon tree boas and stuff. Just go out, find a nice big piece of wood, bring yeah. it in, clean it off a little bit so there's no like anything on it, and then just put it right in the enclosure. Yeah, it's totally fine. Yeah, I think yeah. I think people, people forget that concept of like these things in the wild. Like it's the wild. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's the wild, and the water monitors are so accustomed to human beings, and they just they just seem to follow them village to village. Mm -hmm. You find out where your trash heap is, and they're in it, eating fish bones and chicken necks and all kinds of stuff. All the stuff you don't want to eat. <laughs> yeah, they're eating all the, the garbage. Yeah, I think, I think raccoons is like the perfect way to describe it. <laughs> That's what they are. Yeah, they fill that niche. Yeah. So I went to Lumpini Park in Thailand. And, mm -hmm. uh, I, and there's thousands of people in this park, exercising, doing yoga, riding bikes, dancing. And the park has a big lake in the middle of it with water monitors. So I was like, holy mm -hmm. shit. These lizards are so used to people. They don't They're even just hanging out, right? So, of course, I'm so excited that all the water monitors know I'm there to see it because they could see it in my eyes. <laughs> I'm like this from the, from the, I'm like this. And, uh, you know, my eyes are wide open, just staring at them. They all see me. And they won't go anywhere near me. Yeah. So I learned, I learned that if I don't look at them, you know, like totally like, you know, don't yeah. look at them. You can get really, really close if you're, you know, you sidle up to them. Yeah. That's all awesome. In that park, just because they're so used to people. But as soon as you're staring at it and they think that you're going to grab it, you're gone. They're gone. Yeah. So there was one in the river, in the lake coming at me. And I was like, holy shit, this is my first water monitor visual, you know? <laughs> There he is yeah. coming right at me. I was like, he's going to climb on my lap. We're going to hug and kiss. It's going to be the greatest experience. <laughs> he sees me, stops in the water, dead stop, turns sideways like this, and keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> he watched me the whole time. He saw my eyes from 50 yards out. He knew I was coming. <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. Hey, I should no, drink wine more hey. often. I get funnier with wine. <laughs> that would happen oh, at Tinley. That that was, yeah. What? It says that was going down at Tinley. You over here drinking wine, guy? <laughs> yeah, I had, a, I had box wine under the under the cat uh, <laughs> under the curtains there. You know? Classy, we're, we're real classy, like classy. <laughs> we're getting we got the box of wine. We're drinking it out of the solo cup, the little red, the red. Yeah. Cup. We got the Zinfandel. We had it all in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Actually, I, I had like, I think I had maybe two beers that whole show. That was it. I was so tired. If I drank anymore, I would have been asleep behind the, behind the table. Yeah. Those yeah, shows it's are exhausting. It's a long ride, a lot of work. Hmm? Tinley, Tinley was like a whirlwind. Yeah. Yeah, and it goes so fast. It's like before you know, it's over. Yeah, all that hard work, and it's like, wow. Yeah. So I drove to that one, and I drove back. It took me, with stops and stuff, like twenty hours. Oof. Yeah, because we stopped to take a break, and who has to pee? Who mm. has to go to the bathroom? Who's hungry for the? Oh my god, I I don't eat that much when I'm driving on those trips. I just, you know, who who wants to stop and take a crap at a truck stop? Not me. Preferably not, yeah, no thanks. 
and yeah. man, but you know, you're with your friends and you talk lizards and snakes and sports and whatever else, and it goes by pretty quick. You get through it. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right. So Fun. we're down on our on our hour mark. We just hit our hour mark, so we're we're wrapping up. But before we let you go, okay, we got a question that we ask every single one of our guests, and that one question is. What in the realm of reptiles, be it something in your own collection, something you've seen online, whatever. So what in the realm of reptiles has you really excited about reptiles? Oh, man. Um, probably. It's probably the growing love of reptiles. Like, There's more people joining this hobby every day. And uh, it's not so... It's not so like back culture anymore. It's really coming to the forefront, you know? So a lot of people that you wouldn't expect to get into reptiles are getting into reptiles. And just mm-hmm. that alone, you know, um, that I would say excites me because, um, you know, we need more people on our side. <laughs> Absolutely. You know? Um, Hell yeah. So that I would say, yeah. I like the fact that it's not so, you know, back alley hobby anymore. You know, like it was in the 90s. It was like, you know, just, yeah. you know, you, you keep reptiles. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So yeah. I think that's a good thing. You know, I saw my wife watches soap operas, and I saw they had a bearded dragon on General Hospital. What? In, the, in the background, they had a, a tank. It looked like a little Zilla set up, you know, with the bearded dragon. And the guy was talking to it. That's awesome. I'm like, you would have so never cool. seen that 20 years ago. Yeah. You know? And then, you know, my, my kids were watching a cartoon, and it was uh, the Bubble Guppies, and they were talking about a female monitor lizard laying eggs. What? On, on the Bubble Guppies. Wow. And that's viewed by millions of kids every morning, the Bubble Guppies. Yeah. Talking wow. about it. And it was a cartoon version of a, of a water monitor. And she was laying eggs in a nest. That's so cool. It's starting to become more mainstream. Yeah. And that I like. That really excites me. That's so cool. If you're going to say if I was impressed by somebody's morph ball python, I really wasn't. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's it's interesting to see what people say because some people are like, well, I produce this really cool thing that I really like and I'm really excited about this next project that I got. Some people are like, I... You know, my nephew got into reptiles recently and I got, you know, I got him a pet lizard or a snake or whatever, or, or, you know, some people are like, they're just excited that more people are excited about reptiles. And it's interesting to see where people's minds go on those sort of things. I have a little girl at home. She's upstairs sleeping right now. And she is really passionate, loves this stuff. She's not afraid of anything. She grabs everything by the head and I tell her, listen, you can't do that. (laughs) She's not afraid. She's like, you know, she's got, she's bred and she's bred crested geckos and hatched them. She's now she's got gargoyle eggs. She's seven years old. Wow. Like, and with a little guidance from somebody she knows, you know, she's going to be something uh, to contend with, I think, you know, she, Hell yeah. she wants to know the Latin names of stuff. Like she's really into it. She knows yeah. who's gravid. She knows she, she doesn't know the whole process, but she knows when they're <laughs> gravid. She knows when they're swelling. <laughs> She knows how to dig up the eggs. She knows how to put the eggs in the container gently. And, you know, she's uh-huh. really learning. So eventually she'll become, you know, the, the, the new face of Sim Container when I'm, you know, when I'm retired in 10 years. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> not, not 10 years. What are you doing? That quick? Wow, geez. John goes right to the, he's like, hey, man, I just make Sim Containers and Egg Abaters. And I move. <laughs> now, I'm not that old. I'm not that old. I'm not that old. <laughs> I'm not retiring. If, listen, if I retire, if I re- I can't retire from reptiles, it's impossible. It's too mm-hmm. ingrained in me. It's like, you know, it started. I think this started with the fascination with dinosaurs when I was two, mm-hmm. and it just didn't leave. You know, so then you find something to enhance it, and it happens to be live animals. You know, especially mm-hmm. reptiles because they look more like dinosaurs than than pigs and cows do. So you know, I kind of went in that direction. You know. And just catching local reptiles, it just stayed with me. And it's, it's always a thrill to find something. 
you know it doesn't even have to be reptiles like just just um like finding uh you know a, a strange bug in my neighborhood is always like oh my god you gotta see this thing i caught one of those um it's a giant click beetle with these big white Ooh, and black yeah. eye spots yeah, on the yeah. Back of the shoulders. yeah. it is big yeah yeah they're cool <laughs> so it was in memphis i found one that was like big on on the tree there i i took hundreds of pictures of this look of this bug <laughs> It didn't do anything special, but just sit there for me. I was just like, click, 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 click. <laughs> yeah. And I had to show everybody I knew. You know, like, look at this. Hell yeah, that's awesome. That's so, so cool. It's, it just, it just the the nature, the natural world, just excite. It's just more exciting than you know anything else to me. So, hell Absolutely. yeah. So, oh right, man. So if people want to find out more about you and sim containers and you know the monitors you're working with and yeah. stuff. You're where should they look you up? Just go on Instagram and check out my page, Sim Container. It's one word, S-I-M Container. And uh, I post all my amount of the pictures there. I, I post there almost every day. Um, I, I answer your DMs as best and fast as I can. Um, I also can help you with your Sim Container setup, so how you're setting up your reptiles. If you have a question, you want to ask me what my favorite color is, I'll give you a straight answer. Whatever you like. <laughs> I'll help you out. I try to help everybody because I was that little pain in the ass bothering, you know, Kevin at the White Plains show in <laughs> 1997, you know, <laughs> Pete, Pete Mimikos. Pete Mimikos was a New York City uh, dwarf monitor breeder, and I would be at his table at White Plains in the 90s like, oh, my God, you know, like just so excited. And he'd be like, get away, kid. <laughs> you bother me. Get out of here. <laughs> But yeah, I, I learned from him and he's like, you know, somebody I will never forget. So, and I remember talking to Kevin about water monitors at the White Point show a long, long time ago. Hell yeah. And it Hell just, yeah. Uh, and I, I, I never, beetle. never forgot it. Never forgot those guys. So. Hell they yeah. stay with you for life. So yeah, go on Instagram, uh, Sim Container. Uh, also, it's Facebook. Um, I have a page called Sim Container by School Model Concepts. But Instagram is probably the fastest and easiest way to find me. Oh, yeah. Awesome, man. So thank you so much for thank you. chatting tonight. This was a lot of fun. And I uh, fun let's too. round two. All right. Yeah, this is yeah. better than first round, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, I, I, I was telling Jeremy at the show, I was like, you have no idea. Like, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm always punctual. I'm early. Oh, yeah. He's like, look. So He's like, I'm a punctual person. I don't, you know. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm a responsible, but I just, it just slips, and I'm sorry. I am the worst about it, so don't, don't say <laughs> it. It's okay. <laughs> so, it's the first law that I'm aware of. Okay, I'm not good at that stuff. But let me know. Let me know for round three, and we'll do, uh, we'll do another one. I'd be happy to. Hell yeah! Hell yeah. All right. Uh, and we'll, we'll plan that trip to Ty's Park or Ty Park's. You hear me? I just said yeah. we'll plan the trip to Ty's Park. Yeah, I'm with it. I'm with it. We're Ty's gonna, Park. Gonna, he should have called it that. Ty's Park. That was a mess. Right. <laughs> you should change Iguana names. Ty's scrap, Park. The, scrap the whole Iguana Land thing. Just call it Ty's <laughs> Park. Ty's for Park. branding. For branding. Just, Ty's yeah, Park. Yeah. Just redo it. Just redo it, Ty. You could do it. Ty's Park. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. Yeah. All right, boys. Thank you. We're out. We'll talk to you again. Take care. Thank you. See you again.